let's face it, video editing on Linux sucks. Or at least that might be what you believe if you spent any time online. But in this video, I'm going to be exploring, is that claim really true? Is Linux video editing as bad as they say? Because as you might have imagined, that's right. In this video, I'm going to be defending Linux video editing. And in this video, I just kind of wanted to offer a different perspective from most people. And this isn't going to be a response video. I'm not taking shots at specific YouTubers, but there is kind of a general sentiment online and on YouTube in general. And I wanted to offer a different perspective because every time I hear Linux video editing being discussed online, it's always about how bad it is, how much we deserve better, how much it sucks. And of course, that can really influence if someone wants to switch to Linux and maybe they do a little bit of video editing. For example, for me, even before I started a YouTube channel, I had this thought in the back of my head that was just put there that, oh, Linux video editing is just so much worse than on something like Windows or Mac OS. And so in this video, I wanted to kind of go over the most common complaints that I hear most often about Linux video editing and just offer my opinion on it. Now, in this video, I'm going to be primarily talking about Caden Live. So at this point, I personally consider Caden Live to be the best, most featureful editor on Linux, and it's what I use full time to edit my videos. And no, it's definitely not because I couldn't get DaVinci Resolve to work with my Intel GPU. But in all seriousness, I'm going to talk about Caden Live primarily because I'm sure you know that this channel is all about free and open source software. That is a big reason why a lot of people use Linux. And plus, I don't want to disappoint Richard Stallman talking about proprietary software. And I'm going to be primarily talking about Caden Live because there are other video editors on Linux and they are good, but some of them I haven't used enough in order to give a fair perspective on them. So I'm mostly going to be talking about Caden Live. And of course, the other free and open source video editors on Linux, they all have much less features than Caden Live. And if you want the best experience video editing on Linux, then you're probably going to be coming to the same conclusion as I am. You're probably going to end up using Caden Live. And for any serious editing work, Caden Live is pretty much what you're going to have to use. But the first complaint that you'll probably hear about is how buggy Caden Live is. And I've heard, I don't know how many times, that Caden Live is buggy and constantly breaking. But for me, I've been using Caden Live full time for about six months and I haven't run into any big issues. Now, this might just be a recent development because most complaining I hear about bugs is from years ago. And so for me, at least the past six months have been very stable. So I'm going to assume that the Caden Live team has just been doing a good job recently. But in my experience, Caden Live has just been one of the most stable pieces of software that I've used in a while. And I don't want to discount anyone's experience. Like if you hear someone talking about Caden Live and about how buggy it is, I'm not trying to discount their experience and say, actually, it's like this. But at least in my experience, it has been very good. I guess the only real issues I run into are a couple of crashes. But Caden Live does a really good job auto saving. So both of these times I only lost maybe like 30 seconds of work. It's really nothing. And that's about it in terms of big issues. There are a couple of small annoyances, like when I ripple delete or whenever I delete a clip and want all the clips after it to shift. Sometimes it forgets to bring along a couple of clips and they get kind of out of sync with the rest of them. But the bugs tend to be pretty minor like this. And there are workarounds. So while there are a couple of small little annoying issues, it's not really a big deal. And I haven't really experienced things like Caden Live breaking every update. And if you do have issues with Caden Live breaking all the time, it's probably because you're using something like Arch or a rolling release based distro where the updates are coming to you all the time. And in that case, you can just roll it back or use a more stable distro where the updates are being held back for a while. But I just haven't come across issue where it's breaking every single time it updates. And another issue that a lot of people have is with a lot of Caden Live's design decisions. And I'll be honest and say that some of them are annoying. Like, for example, if you want to add text to the screen, then what you have to do is you have to create a title in the project bin and then drag it to the timeline. And if you want to position images or text on the screen, then you first have to apply the transform filter 
and only then can you move things around and resize them. And I'll admit, this is not the most efficient workflow. I would rather just be able to grab an image and move it around without having to apply a filter to it first. So there are some small design decisions like this that are a little bit annoying, and I wish they were different. But I think everybody knows that with free and open source software, you're going to have to make some concessions and some workarounds to the workflow that you've been using before. Especially if you're coming off something like proprietary software. So previously, if you were using something like, I don't know, Sony Vegas, I don't know, what, what are people even using these days on Windows and Mac OS? Because a lot of these concessions, a lot of it is just unlearning and relearning workflows that you're used to. Because if you're used to something like the Adobe workflow and doing things in Photoshop or doing things in Adobe Premiere, then learning a new way of doing things is going to seem very unintuitive. Now, most free software advocates will still use and recommend GIMP, even with its limitations. So GIMP, of course, is a graphics program that a lot of people replace something like Photoshop with. And of course, compared to something like Photoshop, you could have the same complaints about GIMP's design decisions. Like, after all these years, GIMP still doesn't have non-destructive layer editing, or you're still not able to move multiple layers at the same time, unless you actually put them in a group. But everybody kind of accepts this as part of GIMP, and it's just the workflow that you have to get used to if you want to use GIMP. And I don't see the same kind of general sentiment that image editing on Linux is so bad. Now, does it have the same features and polish as something like Photoshop? No, but that's okay unless you actually do full-time graphic design and you need absolutely every feature. But for the other 99% of the world, it's more than enough. And I don't really see Caden Live being so much worse than something like GIMP in this case. Sure, there are quirks, but they're just something that you have to get used to. And if you do have a lot of experience using something like Photoshop or Premiere, then you just have to get used to the new workflow. I will be honest and say there is a learning curve. When I first used Kden Live, I thought it was awful because a lot of good keyboard shortcuts are not there by default and you have to add them. It took a while to learn and wrap my head around and configuring it until I was completely satisfied with the workflow did take a little while. But once you wrap your head around it, I think it is a very good experience. And this brings me to my next point. Can you use Linux video editors like Kden Live professionally? And I will say yes and no because Professionally is a very large spectrum. Now, are you going to be using this to edit Hollywood level movies? Probably not. But a lot of Linux YouTube channels use Kden Live just fine. And Kden Live has been used in all sorts of different applications, including TV shows. So let's not pretend that the only thing Kden Live is good for is baby's first YouTube video. But I will say that one big issue is that a lot of professional grade video equipment is just not designed for Linux or Kden Live. So for a lot of cameras, you're going to be using codecs that are proprietary, but industry standard. And if you have been using software like Premiere, then Linux video editing is definitely going to seem like a step down. And a common complaint is from people who spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on video and sound equipment for other editors, like maybe Adobe Premiere. So this equipment is specifically designed for use with industry standard software like Adobe Premiere. And so it's just not going to work on Linux with Kden Live. And there has kind of always been a limitation with Linux in that sometimes you are constrained by the hardware, but this is really nothing new. And so if you want the best experience, you're going to have to buy equipment while keeping in mind that you needed to work on Linux. So I know, for example, Gardener Bryant, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, but you probably know him as the Linux gamer. He said in a video specifically that he buys all of his equipment with a focus on making sure that it works in Linux. And this is a limitation, and he discusses in this video, I'll leave a link to this in the description, I think it is a very good video, but he discusses here that sometimes he couldn't buy the exact equipment that he wanted to because it just wouldn't work on Linux. I made decisions that allowed me, from the very beginning, to use open source software. But if you do start your audiovisual setup while keeping in mind that you need everything to work on Linux, then you can get a very capable and professional setup on Linux. But just don't expect to perfectly translate a thousands of dollars multimedia setup that's been working for years on something like Windows to Linux. That's just not going to work well in most cases, let's be honest. But for 95% of use cases, like the vast majority of you, 
The only videos you're ever going to edit are your Minecraft Let's Plays. You don't need a supercomputer or top of the line industry grade software. Most people aren't going to edit anything more complex than a YouTube video. And so for most applications, it is more than capable. And you won't find every possible effect in every possible option in something like Caden Live. But I think it has more than enough. And let's face it, for a lot of people, Linux is not going to meet their needs. But of course, we already knew that Linux is not for everyone. Linux is always going to be a niche operating system. No, I'm sorry, but I don't think the year of the Linux desktop is coming anytime soon. But if you can accept that and learn how to do things in a different way, the Linux way, then you will probably enjoy using Linux. That's usually the case with most things on Linux. So switching from Windows, it probably feels like you're missing some features, but then you find something new that Linux can do, and it ends up being even better than your workflow from Windows. Now, not to say that Kden Live is the only tool that you're going to use on Linux. There are a bunch of other great open source softwares on Linux, like, for example, OBS, which is industry standard software for recording and live streaming. Of course, that is available on Linux as free and open source software, and it works great in my experience. And FFmpeg is a really great command line tool for video and audio transcoding that I use a lot. It's extremely useful. And yes, it's a command line tool, which can be intimidating, but you can do like I did, and you can create a script for repetitive tasks that you end up doing a lot and you need to run all the time. Like, for example, I have a whole video about a script I created with FFmpeg in order to transcode videos for the web. And so a lot of things like transcoding audio and video, you can just do straight from FFmpeg. You don't need a fancy software wrapper around it. So in conclusion, I think Linux video editing is not that bad. Of course, it's not going to meet the needs of everyone, but for the majority of people making videos, which is mostly just hobbyists creating YouTube videos or editing vacation footage, but for most people, Linux video editing will probably fit your needs. Just give it a try and let's stop the narrative that Linux video editing is so horrible when it's really not. And I would even go so far as to say that it's pretty good. So forget everything that you've heard about how bad Linux video editing is and give it a try yourself.